How do you cook the perfect roast beef? Well, here we go guys. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step and I've got a few little tricks up my sleeve that are gonna make it even more amazing. This is my very best roast beef. So we are tackling one of the greats in any kitchen and that is a perfect roast beef. Let's get talking on the beef first of all because that's one of the important things. <laughs> um, so I am going with what's called a rib roast. Um, you can see I've got bones. These bones are prepared in a way that's called Frenched. So the fat and the meat have been removed and they're basically just clean bones. I love the bone in because a lot of people say that bones in improve the flavor of meat. I'm not really so sure about that. What I think it is the meat that's closest to the bone stays a little bit more rarer. So for me, if you like your meat a little bit more rare, go with the bone in. If you're someone who likes it more well done, then I think you're better off going bone out. So there you go, that's my theory. Now to prepare this guy, we basically just want some salt. So we're gonna add a few little unconventional things a little bit later on, but just plain old salt first of all. So be really generous here. This is a big hunk of meat. So, you know, it's gonna take, it can take quite a bit of salt. Now, if you can, it'd be really great to leave this overnight, uncovered in the fridge. That's actually gonna help form a really good crust because that will kind of dry out a lot of that top layer of skin and fat. But I have a little extra step that we're gonna be doing in the oven, a little brining while the beef is cooking. So if you can't do your overnight salting, that's okay. I have a little shortcut for you. Before we get to that though, let's prep our pan because what I wanna do here is make a little bit of a, a trivet for the beef. I don't want it sitting in the hot pan and searing on one side. I wanna make sure that there's lots of good airflow. And just to improve like the perfume and the flavor as well, I'm gonna make the trivet out of onions and garlic. So let's start with some onion. Okay, so this is kind of like your roasting rack, if you like, which you can use a roasting rack if you want to as well, but I just love the extra, you know, fragrance that you get from the onion and the garlic. Now, beef goes on top, and if you've got bone, you want bone facing down, that's gonna further protect your beef. So now the important times and temps. So you can go hard and fast here. I prefer to go low and slow, and then we'll develop the sort of crust at the end with a little bit of extra butter and a, a little bit of a secret ingredient of mine. Uh, but what you want is a 150 degrees Celsius oven and you want about 20 minutes per 500 grams. So there you go. So this one is about 2.3 kilos. I'm gonna come back and check on this guy though after an hour uh, and see how we're going. I've got a little tip for you guys about how to see if your beef is cooked before you slice into it. All right, let's get going. Now, just because your beef is in the oven doesn't mean you can quite relax just yet. Uh, remember I said I had a bit of a brining technique that we're gonna be doing for the beef? Here it is. What you want is, um, we're gonna make a brine that is one part salt, two parts water. So first of all, I want a good hunk of salt here. Now just give that a stir and let it sit for about 10-15 minutes so the salt dissolves. So let's talk about it a bit more when I get the beef out. Um, one more thing that I want to do with you guys before we get going on the beef and that is make my little special butter that we're going to be applying to the beef later on. So again a little bit unconventional but you know me, I, know, I don't follow the rules. Um, what you need here is some butter and some Korean gochujang paste. That's right, I mean, would it be a recipe of mine if there wasn't something a little bit spicy? And we're just gonna mix these together and make ourselves a little flavor bomb that's gonna make our beef even better. So I'm gonna add this onto my beef a little later on in the cooking process. So I'll just set it aside, leave it on the bench top so it's nice and soft when you go to use it. Okay, so we're 15 minutes in and what I wanna do is now brush our meat with that salt brine that we made earlier. Um, so what this is gonna do is sort of penetrate the meat a little bit more with some seasoning. Back in the oven, another 15 minutes, we'll do some more brining. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit more color here. I want another brush with our salt brine. And now pop that back into the oven, another 30 minutes, and that will take our total cooking time to an hour. And then we wanna to start to do some checking to see how we're going with the meat inside. Okay, so we're an hour in and we're looking pretty good here. Now, obviously because we're doing a low temperature to start with, we don't have a huge amount of color. That's gonna come a little bit later on, but what I wanna do now is kind of check how we're going inside your beef. 
oven temperatures can be notoriously incorrect and so wildly not what is on your dial. Um, so I always like to do this. Now take yourself a skewer, a metal skewer would be better. I've only got a wooden one at the moment, so I'm just gonna skewer my beef in here and just in right into the center. Just leave it a few seconds or so. And then two things here, when I pull it out, you can see there's a little bit of blood, so we've still got some redness in there. And then just let me touch that to my top lip and top lip just because it's quite a sensitive area of your face, but um, it feels very cold. It doesn't feel warm at all. So that to me says that we've got still got a very rare piece of beef. If it was warm or, sunny or really hot, if it's really hot, you're kind of stuffed. You're, your beef is well done, unless you want it well done. If it's warm, then you're looking at a medium rare. If you want to be super technical about it, get a digital thermometer so you can actually check the temperature of your meat. You want to pull it out when it's about 55 degrees, but we're not there yet. I'm going to do one more little bit of salting here. All right, and now's the time that I want to get that gochujang butter that we made earlier out, and I'm just going to slather that all over this big piece of beef. All right, so that butter is going to continue melting and basting our meat in beautiful, buttery, spicy gochujang flavors. Amazing. All right, now I'm going to give this the rest of the 30 minutes that I think it needs. Remember I said 20 minutes per 500 grams. So let's get that back in the oven. All right, so this is starting to look and smell really delish. Wow, look at that color. I love the kind of red tinge that that gochujang brings to the beef as well. Now, what I wanna do here is see how we're going. So I'm gonna get my trusty skewer again. All right, so that's starting to feel warm to me, which is what I want. So I don't wanna, definitely don't wanna overcook this lovely piece of beef. So I think we're ready to go with our hard sear now. We've sort of slowly cooked that beef through about medium rare is what I'm guessing and hoping. Uh, now what I've done is I've turned the oven grill or the broiler uh, up super high. I wanna get this back under there so we get a really beautiful crust on the outside. About five, 10 minutes it should take. Okay, wow, I am loving the look of that. Look at that beautiful color and that little bit of sizzle. Mm, smells so good. Now you definitely, definitely, definitely wanna let that beef rest. It's such a crime when you don't do that because what's happened is as the beef's cooked, all the heat from the outside has made all the juices kind of like suck into the middle. Uh, and what you want is for the beef to relax and for all those juices to come flooding back out into your lovely beef. So that's the reasoning why you want at least a good 10 minutes here. Now the onion and garlic, what I wanna do is just spoon a little bit of those pan juices over the top of those. And then I wanna pop these guys under the broiler just to give them a bit of time to get some nice caramelization as well. Okay, so slicing this guy, you've got a few options here, but I always think taking it to the table with the bone in is so much more dramatic. So what I like to do is let's take the butcher's string off. Um, and the whole reason I get my butcher to put the string on for me in the first place is that one, it keeps everything nice and compact. So we try not to, you know, dry everything out or overcook it. Uh, two, just keeps it a really nice shape. So I'll just get in here and cut that off. Now, so once you've got all of those pieces of string off, now we get into the slicing. So a couple of things here, you can, uh, what I like to do generally is take the whole thing to the table because as I said, the bones and everything, the whole roast just looks so dramatic and delicious. Um, and then at the table, I'll do a couple of slices because of course we wanna see what's going on in there. So let's do that now. Whoa, have a look at that. I mean, that meat is so perfect, in my book anyway. I mean, you've got beautiful red and juicy meat all the way through um, and very, very even. I mean, you know, that's just, I mean, that's just pretty much perfection. <laughs> I am super happy about that. Um, and then what you wanna do is at the table, just so you can get a few more slices out of here rather than just doing the slices that are the size of the bone, if you know what I mean. The bone's off and then slice, keep slicing away, but, um, that to me is one perfect roast. Now I want to get my beautiful onions and everything out onto my board. And then just a little bit of mustard. And there you go guys. One very special, little bit unconventional roast beef, but can I tell you, it really is pretty damn amazing. Let me get in here and try it because I cannot wait. All right. 
I am so going to enjoy this. Mm. Do you know what makes all the difference there is that we have such a lovely, salty, crusty kind of exterior. And then you've just got that little hint of the butter and the gochujang, and you don't even know why it tastes really great, but that gochujang and the butter really mm, like takes it to a whole new level of like savoriness and beefiness and ah, oh, that is so good. Holy cow, wow. Mm. Such a good, easy, foolproof way to do your prime rib. Yum.